Okay, hi guys. All right. Chapter three, gravitation. Okay, um, you guys are so unlucky. All right, this is a very um, what do you call? Uh, slightly advanced. I mean, I would say it's slightly advanced. All right, physics. Um, <clears throat> it's a very new topic for form four. Okay, previously form four and form five, two years, they never learned about gravitation. Okay, but um, for your in, in your case because KSSM previously in form three and form two, you did learn a lot of the form four and form five topics. So, <clears throat> what they did was they bring forward some uh, topics from the higher levels, meaning your uh, form six and so on. Okay, but it's not going to be uh, awfully difficult to the extent where you could not understand. Uh, just slightly, maybe a little bit difficult. All right. Okay, so uh, this chapter focuses a lot on your understanding. Okay, um, if you do not understand how it works, everything will be, um, it, you'll basically be confused. All right, okay, all right. So, gravitation, um, again, our friend here, our dear friend Newton, once again, he has made us proud. All right, and I'm sure all of you will be hating this guy, <clears throat> but never mind. Okay, so gravitational force basically you already understand. Okay, you know what is gravitational force, but how do we calculate it? Okay, uh, in this chapter, we're going to do a lot of calculations. All right, so uh, we also call gravitational force as universal force. Okay, meaning that actually uh, gravitational force exists between two objects or two bodies. Okay, in the universe. <clears throat> All right. So, for example, if um, I have ground, all right, and then I have a leaf, okay, that falls down from a tree, okay, what we observe is the leaf is going downwards, right? But actually, what is happening is that the leaf and the ground are both experiencing gravitational force, all right? Okay. <clears throat> so theoretically speaking, by right, if we are living in the uh, no, uh, if based on the what they call explanation by Newton, okay, gravitational force exists between two objects, right? So by right, these two objects will actually come together. They are going to pull towards each other, okay. But in the case of the leaf falling here, you don't see the ground moving upwards, right? It's impossible. If you see the ground moving upwards. You're high, basically. <laughs> okay, so, uh, <clears throat> and also, if you think it from a logical aspect, it's impossible for the ground to move. Why? Because it's very, very, uh, the mass is too large, okay, for the ground to actually move towards the leaf, okay? The leaf is lighter. That is why you see the leaf going downwards and not the ground going upwards, all right? But in truth, both are actually. Uh, experiencing a gravitational force okay the pull okay both are pulling each other just that because you are stronger and what they call uh, because i don't want to say fat lah, because just because you are stronger you are able to pull the other person towards you all right so for example like our sun okay our sun and the moon and earth all right if you compare earth and moon earth is bigger than moon right so the mass is larger than the moon so typically the gravitational force here will be stronger hence the moon will be pulled nearer towards the earth same goes for the sun okay the sun is the largest star in the uh, solar system all right that is why the sun is able to actually pull all the planets and the planets will actually orbit the sun <clears throat> okay so just remember that all right exists between two bodies Okay, um, all right, if you consider his law, right, if you say that it exists between two bodies, meaning two objects will pull towards each other, but why if I have two human beings? I love my humans because I like to draw stick humans. Three has. Okay, and then let's say if I have a lady here. Okay, this is a girl. Right, male, female. Okay, so between two humans, this is also two objects, right? But why we humans do not 
come towards each other we don't pull towards each other and then stick together and walk with four legs all right <laughs> the reason being is because <coughs> okay our mass is too small all right it's so small that it neglects the effect whereby you are going to pull two human beings together okay then it's why you don't see uh, two person walking on the street when they go near towards each other suddenly they stick okay no such thing right okay it's because our mass is very very small okay uh gravitational force you will only see a pull when the mass is large huge okay that's why we focus a lot on the planets because their match is like uh very very huge okay all right <clears throat> so newton's law of gravitation so you learn a lot of newton's theory previously you learn uh newton's what they call uh, law of motion all right uh, the inertia okay force okay now in this particular chapter you're going to learn about uh gravitation okay now this is what newton's law says all right uh gravitational force between two bodies is directly proportional to the masses of the uh, object so the larger the mass the higher the gravitational force okay and then second one is inversely proportional okay to the square of the distance between the centers of two bodies just make it simple all right if you are nearer your gravitational force is stronger that's it if you are further your gravitational force is weaker so it's logic right okay then that's why i put here a simplified version okay my law all right no 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 don't simply say that the people sue me okay <clears throat> okay so this is a simplified version lah. all right if you have a larger mass meaning you have a larger gravitational force all right and then if you are nearer okay you have a larger gravitational force okay so this is the main concept of newton's uh, universal law of gravitation okay so if they ask you to define or explain you need to write these two points okay all right so this is an example <clears throat> okay so two objects uh, both different masses okay this is a uh, bigger mass compared to this one so if based on newton's law since both objects will pull towards each other right but because this one is larger in mass so technically this one will be pulled towards will be pulled more towards the um uh, what they call body one will pull towards more to the second object all right so this is the formula first formula that you need to know for calculation okay all right ah, just highlight better Ding. okay okay the first formula that you need to know <coughs> all right gravitational force okay how do we calculate is basically you multiply the two mass of the object divided by their distance okay now this is very important r squared here all right the distance is between center of object okay the distance you must always take uh, take the center of both objects okay the distance from the center of body one to the center of body two okay that's why it's given here distance between centers of two bodies okay and then g here is what we call a gravitational constant all right this one is already fixed okay so this is the formula to calculate all right so the effect of mass and distance okay i already mentioned larger the mass the larger the force the shorter the distance the larger the force okay so okay. therefore if you compare these two right okay f2 will have a larger force compared to f1 because the mass is bigger whereas in this case f1 the force will be larger than f2 because this two is nearer right so that is it for the first part of newton's uh, law of gravitation all right i'm going to go uh, slower a bit okay part by part so that you can fully understand the chapter all right <coughs> so here okay so let me just show you an example how we calculate using the formula here all right so two spherical objects mass kg 200 kg and 500 kg centers are separated by a distance of 25 meters okay so we write down what we have so first mass 200 kg second mass 500 kg right mass must be in kilograms if given in grams you need to convert to kilograms okay 
centers are separated by a distance of 25 meter meaning now my r is 25 meter okay distance, distance must be in meter okay so you must always convert everything to meter okay find the gravitational force between them this one is always given okay so f just substitute into the formula very simple all right 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 okay and then multiply to first mass and second mass okay divided by r squared okay remember it's r squared so it's 25 squared all right Okay, so you just punch in your calculator. Alright, so let's see what answer should we get here. Oops. Okay, so you just punch in your calculator lah. Uh, then times 200. Times 500. Okay, and then 25 squared. So the gravitational force that you are going to experience is 1.0 hmm, I'm just gonna move it, okay? the power of negative 8 Newton, okay? force, so the unit is Newton, okay? remember that alright, so that is the example okay, so um, just complete all the exercises and then uh, I will be uploading the second part uh, by tomorrow. Alright, okay, bye.